Welcome, I'm Robert Breaker, and about a year ago I did a video entitled September 23rd, 2015. And in that video I showed a lot of things that people had said on the internet were going to take place on that date. And guess what? Many of those things took place on that date. So what I did is I went to the internet and saw all these people getting around and talking about, oh, this is going to happen on September 23rd, 2015. And I got over a million views of people wanting to know what's all this about the September 23rd date and if you go to YouTube often you'll find there's a lot of people that for some reason like to make videos about 923 uh, September 23rd and they say Hollywood and all these movies puts out this number repeatedly 923 what's that all about well <clears throat> I made that video in September 23rd 2015 about September 23rd 2015 and quite a few people watched that video. Now some people said, well, nothing happened. Well, some of the things that I mentioned, if not all of them, in that video did happen. The Pope came to America, something that the world never seen before. And all these different things that pointed to a New World Order agenda coming to pass. But many people said, well, you said the rapture would take place on September 23rd, 2015. And I never, never said that. In fact, at the very beginning of the video, I, I have a little banner there that says, uh, this is no way trying to set the date of the rapture. And that's the same with this video as well. I'm not trying to set the date of the rapture and say, you have to believe the rapture is this day. It is a possibility, but I'm not saying that it is. And I'm not saying that I believe that it is. But I've been looking at a lot of YouTube videos lately and I've been noticing a lot of things. A lot of people are now talking about the September 23rd date again. And this time they're talking about September 23rd, 2017. Two years later than 2015. What is it about this date that people keep coming back to? So what I thought I'd do is I'd make a video about this. And you can go back and watch the 2015 September 23rd video if you like. But this video, I'm going to talk about, as I did in that video, many things which I've been seeing on the internet. Because on the internet, we have a lot of people talking about this date. Why is it they keep going back to this date? Well, I think the answer might surprise you. So I hope this is an interesting study for you. I'm going to show you some Bible verses as a minister of the gospel. I'm going to talk about the Bible as well and give some uh, Bible verses also. And I just want to ask this question, is there anything to this? You know, there just might be. There just might be something to this date, or then again, it could be nothing to it. So I'm approaching it from that angle, not trying to convince you that, yes, you have to believe that uh, this date, something's going to happen. But at the same time, trying to go to the Bible. You know, the Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5.21, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. So as a Christian, as a Bible believer, I look at things, and then I take my Bible, and I say, okay, what does the Bible say about that? And so that's what I want to do with this date that many people are talking about on Internet, on YouTube, and ask the question, is there something to it? Does the Bible say anything about it? And uh, kind of like a reporter, I just want to report on what people are saying. And let's see if it's true or not. Let's, let's decide for ourselves. So the first thing I want to say is that this is when Jesus died, so here's the death of Christ. We know that was around 33 AD, which means that Jesus was born, the birth of Jesus, before that, 0 AD. Well, when Jesus Christ was born, there was a star in heaven. And that star in heaven was a star that marked the king, the coming birth of Jesus Christ. Now, I mentioned this in the 2015 video, of September 23rd as well because in September 23rd 2015 many um, ast uh, astronomers many scientists were saying that there's some weird weird thing going on in the fact that there's this star that showed up which was a star that appeared and they called it the Bethlehem star the star that appeared during the time that when Jesus was born. That same star, many astro uh, astronomers say, is in heaven again. So almost 2,000 years later, we have a star appearing that it was the same star that appeared, according to astronomers. All right, you can look this all up on YouTube, look at videos. I'm not making anything up here. They all said that there was a star that appeared when Jesus was born. And they say that same star appeared 
September 23rd, around September of 2015. And they say, isn't that something? Well, what does that star mark? This star marks the birth of Jesus here. And over here, what does that star mark? Well, people say, well, it's just coincidence it marks nothing. Or could it be that it marked something? And astronomers say that every 2,000 years or so, this, this star shows up again. Well, if you take here the birth of Jesus, go back to about 1900 B.C., close to 2,000 years, you know what you find? You find a guy named Abraham. I think that's interesting. If this star comes back into view upon the earth every 2,000 years or so, and we date it backwards, you know what we find? We find this guy named Abraham. Who is Abraham? Well, Abraham was a guy that God called, and God said, Abraham, I'm going to give you some promises, and I want you to believe something. And you know what God told Abraham? He said, Abraham, I want you to look at the dust of the earth, and look at the sand. He said, as many little granules of dirt and sand that there are in the earth, that's how many seed I will give you. That's how many descendants that there will be from the earth from you. Boy, it took a lot of faith to believe that, because there's a lot of dirt in, on the ground. But Abraham had a son named Isaac, and Isaac had a son named Jacob. God changed the name of Jacob to Israel. And it's Israel where we find the Jews. So it's quite interesting that this star appears and it's marking this guy named Abraham around that time. And you know, if you read your Bible and you read the book of Genesis, if that star appeared at that time, which astro astronomers tell us it, it appears now, 2,000 years before it appeared, and 2,000 years before that it appeared. It appeared around the time of Abraham. Well, God not only told Abraham to look at the dirt and that his seed would be like the sand of the sea, he said, Abraham, the stars in heaven, look at all those stars. He said, your seed will be as the stars in heaven in number. And yet, in his day, if Abraham would have gone out the back of his tent and looked up, he would have seen this really bright star that only appears every 2,000 years. And how interesting that every time that star appears, it's always connected with uh, something that would do with the Jews. So there's something to this, wouldn't you say? There's something to this. When we saw that sign of the star in September 23rd, 2015, coming back, and they called it the Bethlehem star. Why did they call that the Bethlehem star? Because that was the same star, astronomers are saying, that appeared here when Jesus was born. And it showed up again. Isn't that strange that every 2,000 years or so, this star is showing up? First time it showed up to Abraham, who was the father of Isaac and Jacob, who became Israel or the Jews. So we can really say that Abraham was the father of the Jews. And that star showed up. Then that star showed up at the birth of Jesus Christ, who is what? Jesus is the king of the Jews. So this is almost like a, a Jewish star showing up. Quite an interesting thing. Let me write Abraham equals, we'll call him Father Abraham. The Jews called him Father Abraham. They viewed him as their father. The father of the Jews, they said Abraham was, because from Abraham came the Jewish people through Jacob or Israel. So as we're looking at the Bible, we find a very interesting thing. We find this star that appears at the birth of Christ, and that we're told, in 2015, appeared again. <laughs> and we're told, every 2,000 years or so, so this star shows up, so we go back 2,000 years from here, the birth of Christ, and, oh, there's a guy named Abraham, and that star appeared. Is there something to that, or is that just <clears throat> coincidence? Well, many people would say, well, that's just coincidence. That means nothing. Okay. All right. Well, to me, I think it means something. The Bible tells us that God made the stars, and he made the planets, and he made the moon and the earth, and the, he made everything, and he made them for times and seasons. They're markers of different things that are marked in the Bible. That's so fascinating. Now, when we go to this star right here, the birth of Jesus, you know what we find in the Bible? We find something quite interesting. This star is attached to two years. There's something about this star here that marked the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. Bethlehem. I spelled Bethlehem wrong. Bethlehem. Excuse me. I was thinking in English and Spanish. Bethlehem. Here's the Bethlehem star. Okay. You've got this two years connected to this star. What does that mean? Let's look at this. 
Go with me to Matthew chapter 2 if you have your Bible. And hopefully you know the story. We just had Christmas time show up here, and uh, it just passed. As I'm making this video, it's almost 2017. I'm still in the end of December in 2016 making this video. And we just had Christmas time. What is Christmas time? Well, Christmas is the time of Christ's birth. That's what people say it is. I believe Jesus was probably born on September uh, around the 23rd, if not on the 23rd. But I don't have time to get into that. But when Jesus was born, you'll remember the story, there were these wise men. These wise men came to Jesus. And it took them a while to get to Jesus. How long did it take these wise men to find Jesus? Well, in Matthew chapter 2, we read about Herod. You see, these wise men came to Herod, and they asked Herod, and they said, Hey, Herod, where's born the king of the Jews? Because that star is a marker in heaven that the king of the Jews is going to be born. That's what the wise men said. And Herod said, What you talking about? See, Herod was upset because Herod was a Roman uh, leader, and the Romans had taken over Jerusalem, and he was set up as the king. So the person ruling over Israel during the time of the birth of Jesus was Herod. And Herod called himself the king of the Jews. He said, I'm the king here. I'm ruling here for Caesar. I'm the king. So these wise men come to Herod, and they say, hey, Herod, where's born the king of the Jews? Now imagine if Herod was the king of the Jews, hearing that somebody was coming looking for the king of the Jews. Wouldn't Herod have said, well, here I am? <laughs> they said, no, not you. The one the star marks the birth of. Where is he? Well, Herod is thinking, uh-oh, there's another king of the Jews. I've got some competition. Who, who are you talking about? So the Bible tells us about this star. Now see, I'm tying all this back into the Bible, but we have to start somewhere. And here's that star, and that star, the wise men said, marks the birth of the king of the Jews. So what did King Herod do? Watch this. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which had, he had diligently inquired of the wise men. So there is a two-year period connected with that star. Now, I don't know how it works. Was it that star was in, in, the, in the heavens for two whole years? Is that what it was saying? Whatever it's saying, that somehow there was two years connected with that star, and Herod killed the babies that were from zero up to age two. According to, the Bible says, the time that he had diligently inquired. So it appears, possibly, that that star stayed in heaven for two years is what the Bible is saying through this. Now, I'm not going to go back to the Abraham and the star there, but let's look at the star that is happening now. Here it is, September 23rd, 2015, and all over the Internet, all over YouTube, all over everywhere, even over the news, there's a star. It's called the Bethlehem star. It's the same star that showed up in the heavens at the time when Jesus was born. <laughs> And everybody says, wow! And so everyone says, September 23rd, 2015 must be the day that something happens for the Jews or Jesus returns. Some people said the rapture. Well, there was two years back here that something happened. September 23rd, 2017 would be what? Two years. So some people have said that the September 23rd, 2015 Bethlehem star was a marker and it marks something that's going to happen in two years because of the two years back here. Can I, is that? Okay, now, right now, somebody's going, oh, hum, 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 yeah, whatever. And, I, and I'm not trying to deal with skeptics. I just want to present something to you. I'm not telling you you have to believe this. I want you to see what people are looking at as they study the Bible and make YouTube videos about and talk about and how there's something to all this. Now, how far can we go with it is the question. I am not saying the rapture must be on September 23rd, 2017. I'm not saying that. But at the same time, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> I mean, I'm a Christian. I'm saved. I'm washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm born again. I can't wait for the rapture. It would be nice if it came on 2017. Now, if I stopped right there, a lot of people would just say, oh, well, you know, and whatever. But I got all this together to show you some of the most amazing videos on YouTube are about September 23rd, 2017. Because there is a sign in the heavens. If you've never seen it, go to YouTube and just type in um, September 23rd, 
2017 Revelation 12 sign. And there'll be a bunch of videos show up, but you know, one of them will deal with this. They probably all will. Some are just longer than others. But there is a certain sign that's supposed to appear on this date in 2017 that many people are saying is a sign given in the book of Revelation that's supposed to take place according to the book of Revelation. What are they talking about? Let's go to Revelation chapter 12. And uh, in Revelation chapter 12, I want you to read this. And here we are in Revelation chapter 12. And I'm going to read down there from verse 1 all the way down to verse 6. In Revelation 12 it says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. This is a wonder in heaven. Something's taking place up in heaven. It says, A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her soon as, she, as it was born. And she brought forth the man child who was to rule all the nations with the rod of iron and her child was caught up into the God and to his throne. And a woman fled into the wilderness and there she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her a thousand two hundred and three score days. Alright, so what you have here is the Apostle John writing the book of Revelation and he got a vision and he saw in heaven something off, awesome, awesome and I guess weird at the same time. He saw something strange. So he saw something amazing in heaven. And what he saw was this woman. And this woman was in heaven and she was clothed with the, all these different stars. And she was clothed with the sun and the moon was under her feet and she had 12 stars around her head. And she was pregnant and she was giving birth. Now, I'm not an astronomer. I don't know much about the stars. I do have a message if you want to look it up about the gospel and the stars and how the constellations appear to show Jesus Christ as the creator because he knew history before it even happened, and he shows it. But on September 23rd, 2017, there is something that takes place in the stars that has never taken place in 7,000 years of human history, and it will only take place on this date. What is that? Well, there's a constellation called Virgo, and I am not very good at drawing, so please let me try to draw the constellation of Virgo. Here is what they call the constellation of Virgo. Now, what is Virgo? It's the Virgin. Now, Virgo has all these little stars, and it's represented by a woman who's a virgin, okay? And what we have on September 23rd, 2017, we have the planet Jupiter doing something that it does often. Jupiter, as it travels across the sky, will go into what looks like the womb of this woman and circle around and come out. And it's done that before in history. As people watch the stars, they watch the planet Jupiter as it moves across the sky. And it's interesting how the planet Jupiter moves through this constellation of Virgo or the Virgin. And what it looks like, it looks like it's going into the uterus and the womb and coming out, almost like a woman giving birth. What an interesting thing. And then what you see is the only time in history when this takes place is on September 23rd, because on September 23rd, 2017, we have the moon at her feet. And the sun is right over here. And the Bible says that this woman that gives birth to a man-child that's in the heavens, well, that's where the stars are, the constellations, the Bible says that it's clothed with 12 stars. Well, normally... There's this constellation, constellation named Leo. And Leo is made up of nine stars. Do you see where I'm going with this? <laughs> I hope you do. Um, many people are starting to teach and believe that this Revelation chapter 12 sign is a sign that's a constellation. Now this is Leo. Leo has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stars in the constellation of Leo, and it would correspond with a being above the head of the woman, Virgo, or the Virgin. 
But we read here that the woman is clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet. That matches up. But then it says it has 12 stars above her head. Uh-oh, there's not 12 stars. So, yeah, that sounds plausible. But, but wait. For some reason, on September 23rd, 2017, there are three more planets that just so happen to be in alignment right about here. And you know what that makes? That makes 10, 11, 12. Those are the planets of Mercury, Mars, and Venus. You know what you have? On September 23rd, 2017, you have the most amazing thing. You have what many people are calling the fulfillment of Revelation chapter 12, and this thing happening in the stars in the constellations. Weird. <laughs> Very weird. Now, what's weird is that Jupiter moves across the sky, and for some reason, when it gets to this point, it does a retrograde motion. It goes back the other way in a circle, and then comes back forward this way. And it stays there, in that area, for nine months. Just the same amount of time that a woman, who's pregnant, usually has her gestation period, nine months. And as it goes through the woman's uterus and comes through, it goes through and comes out of the woman's um, womb on exactly September 23rd, 2017. That's what many people are calling the Revelation 12 sign. And they're saying throughout history this sign has never taken place and it will only take place in the stars on that date. Now that's weird. I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> it's going through the feet of the woman. Now you know what's interesting? There's other verses about things like that. This isn't the only place where it says that a woman is going to give birth and a, and a man-child comes out from her and it goes through her feet. In fact, in Genesis chapter 49, we have a prophecy given. And Jacob, this guy over here, Jacob, is given a prophecy to his children. And look what he says in Genesis chapter 49, verses 9 and 10. He says here in Genesis 49, 9 and 10, Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, as an old lion who shall rouse him up. Good question. Who's going to rouse up? Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Verse 10, 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Till Shiloh come. What does that mean, Shiloh? Well, I, I don't know. Shiloh means peace. But look what it says here. <laughs> between his feet. Somebody's coming from between the feet of someone or something. It's an old prophecy. Interesting. Does that have to do with anything? Does that have to do with something being born through the feet of something? Micah chapter 4. We have an interesting verse. Now, remember, all these verses, or all these stars that we started out with, they all tie into Israel somehow. Abraham, the father of the Jews, saw that star. Jesus Christ was born the king of the Jews, and that star marked his birth. Is this Bethlehem star marking some sort of birth? Is this Bethlehem star marking something for Israel? It seems like that star in heaven is a sign from God always pointing to Israel, to the Jews, to the God's chosen people, Israel. That's an interesting thing. Now, Micah chapter 4, we find an interesting thing. And what I'm doing, I'm just giving you things that people have put on the internet that, are, that they're seeing as they read the Bible and they're looking at the stars and they're saying, do these things match? That's up to you to decide. I'm not going to tell you, you've got to believe this. I'm just saying, this is quite interesting. Is there something to it? In Micah chapter 4, verse 8 through 11, we read, And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. God is talking about Zion, Israel, telling them, you're going to have a kingdom. Verse 9, Now why dost thou cry out aloud, is there no king in thee? Is thy counselor perished? For pangs have taken thee as a woman in travail. And God's talking to Israel and says, It's like you're pregnant, like a woman in travail. And verse 10 says, Be in pain and labor to break forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered, there the Lord shall redeem thee from thine enemies. So God is likening Israel in a certain time in the future as a woman that's pregnant and about to give birth to something. And it sounds like she's going to give birth to a kingdom. 
sounds a little like Revelation chapter 12. But here's the kicker. Micah chapter 5, verse 2 and 3. Micah 5, 2 says, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is, to be the ruler of Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. Well, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. The Bethlehem star marked his coming. And then verse 3 says, Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth hath brought forth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. Now if you know your Bible, when Jesus Christ appeared, the Jewish people, Israel, said, Nope, nope, we're not going to accept this guy as our Messiah. No way. So they said, Jesus is not our Messiah. We, we reject him. Well, you read the book of Acts, you see that it changes to this guy named Paul. And then God changes from dealing with the Jews to dealing with the Gentiles through the gospel of salvation. And Paul tells us in the book of Romans that his ministry ends with the rapture. And once the rapture takes place, watch this, then God goes back to dealing with Israel in the tribulation. The tribulation period is called the time of of Jacob's, well who's Jacob? Son of Abraham, son of Isaac really, uh, grandson of Abraham, trouble. So there will be a time in which God goes back to dealing with Jacob or Israel. And over here in the millennium, the thousand year reign of Christ will be the kingdom of Jesus Christ ruling on the earth, the Messiah of Israel. So, <laughs> could it be that this revelation sign marks something to do with Israel and we saw it on September 23rd 2015 as a two-year marker and God is saying watch this watch this watch this there's something coming on September 23rd there's a sign in heaven which I gave you thousands of years ago to look for and that's the date that it takes place and something big is going to happen for Israel during that time some people say well it's the rapture and then God goes back to dealing with Israel could be could be uh, could be uh, something else but it's interesting how you've got the, you see, I can't put it all together. That's why I'm giving it to you. I'll let you do what you want with it. But it is quite interesting. I mean, it is utterly amazing how if you look at the stars, God always puts a marker there if you look, and it's right there and you can't miss it. So could this be the Revelation 12 sign on September 23rd, 2017? Is it possible? There are many, many other verses I could go to, many other things that I could explain, but I just want to make it plain and just throw it out there and then say, now, what do you want to do with it? And I want to be clear, I'm not saying that has to be the date of the rapture. It could happen before then. All I'm saying is I think that marks a milestone for the nation of Israel. Because in 1947, the nation of Israel became a nation again. If you read your Old Testament, you know what you find? God told Israel to always celebrate the Jubilee year. A Jubilee for the nation of Israel is 50 years. Well, 1947 was the nation was founded. But there was something that took place in 1967 that was quite interesting. It was called the Six Days War. Now, in the Jubilee, or the 50th year, every 50th year, this Jubilee says that whoever owned land, if they had sold the land, they'd get the land back. So the land belongs to them. Well, the Six Days War, Israel fought against these other nations and regained territory that God said was theirs. So 50 years later, exactly, a Jubilee would be 2017. Ha <laughs> ha! Is 2017 another Jubilee year of Israel? Will there be another war, perhaps? and Israel gets their land. What if we go back from 1967, 50 years? That takes us to 1917. 1917 was the Balfour Declaration in which the people or, or the nation Declaration of England said that land belongs to the Jew. You see, you can't get away from the Bible even if you don't believe it. God has his timing, God has his numbers, he has his calendar, he has his dates, he has his signs, he has his stars in heaven. Now, I don't know what's going to happen on September 23rd, 2017. 
but whatever it is, it's going to be something big for the nation of Israel. Now, 2017 is coming up this next year. Well, as I give this little teaching, the United Nations has come out and said, Israel, we have voted on a resolution that you cannot build on your own land. <laughs> and the nation of, of the UN, and by the way, America didn't veto it like they usually do. And so now it's supposedly binding. The United Nations is telling Israel, that's not your land. You can't do what you want to with your own land. What does the great God in heaven, the Creator, say about that? He says, look, I marked my people with stars in heaven, and I marked signs, and God in heaven says that land belongs to the Jews. And Jesus himself is going to return and set up his kingdom there, sitting on the throne of Jerusalem. But yet before that, the Bible says the Antichrist is going to come, and there'll be a tribulation, there'll be seven years. And halfway, in the middle of that time, see, it's going to be three and a half years and three and a half years. And the Bible says in the book of Revelation that there's going to be a time of peace. So before there can be that time of peace, there's going to have to be a time of war. So could September 23rd be a war? The Bible says the Antichrist arises, and he's the one that brings peace. So all the prophecies in the Bible and in the book of Revelation, they're all coming to pass in your lifetime, and you're seeing it. And the world just goes, and doesn't even look. All you have to do is look up in the heavens and you'll see God's going, Hey, I'm real. Look at me. I'm giving you all these signs. There's no excuse to believe that I'm not real because I am. 1947, Israel became a nation. Jesus is talking about Israel. says, This generation shall not pass. In the Bible, a generation is about 70 years. So you add seven to that, 70 years to 1947, what do you get? 2017. Something is pointing to the year 2017, September 23rd. Even the constellations and the stars are pointing to something that make you scratch your head and go, hmm, maybe I should start reading the Bible. So I'm going to stop there. I hope this is encouraging to you. I hope this is a blessing to you. If you're a Christian, I hope this is encourages you to look toward heaven and look toward Jesus' return. The rapture is coming soon. I won't say that it's on this date. It could be. I hope so. Wouldn't that be a blessing? What if September 23rd the rapture did take place and this video is left behind as a testimony? Wouldn't that be awesome? I'm not saying that it will be, but I am saying it's a possibility. It would be neat. But this is an interesting thing. So let me close with this. If this is true, you know what's true? Jesus is the Messiah, just like he said he was. And the Jews rejected their Messiah. That's lying for 2,000 years until 1947. They didn't even have their nation or their land back. And if Jesus is the Messiah... That means he's the Savior. So the question is, are you saved? The Gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. The Gospel is that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And he did that, the Bible says, for our sins. Are you saved? You see, the Bible tells us that very shortly this world's going to have God's wrath cast out upon it. God's going to pour out His wrath and indignation against the world in the tribulation period. He's going to send the Antichrist, and the Antichrist is going to give people the mark of the beast. And the Bible tells us whoever has the mark of the beast is going to go straight to hell when Jesus returns at Armageddon to set up His millennial kingdom. You don't have to go to hell. Matter of fact, you don't have to go through the tribulation. If you get saved now by trusting the blood atonement of Christ, you can be saved. But if you deny Jesus, if you want to be saved in the tribulation, well, you'll have to believe He's the Messiah and be willing to die for Jesus. Because in the tribulation period, people will get their heads cut off for Jesus Christ. So are you saved? I gave this because I want, number one, people to see the Bible is true. <laughs> I want people to look up at the heavens and say, wow, it looks like the prophecies in the Bible were true. I want people to get an idea that, yes, we are in the last days, we are in the end times. But I also want people to get saved. Are you saved? Jesus saves. Come to Jesus for salvation. So there's the message. I hope it's encouraging to you. I hope you look in this coming year of 2017 to the stars, look to the sky, for our redemption draweth nigh. Thank you for watching.